One of the biggest fears of self-taught developers is that they won't be able to land a job. And let me be honest with you, it's actually true because 95% of those who start learn programming don't make it actually to a software development job. But worry not, because in this video I'm about to share you some valuable information on why those 95% of people don't make it actually into software development so that you can avoid those mistakes and actually land a job pretty fast. And let me start with a very common misconception among self-taught developers that I have seen in a lot of reddits and forums and Facebook groups and so on. This misconception is that, hey, companies are bad and they don't actually want to hire self-taught developers. Now, this is a misconception and it is totally wrong. It's simply not true. There's even a survey from Free Code Camp that says that in 2022, 60% of the developers that were hired in the United States were actually self-taught developers. So companies are actually open to hire self-taught developers. Now, the self-taught developers themselves, unfortunately, have some limiting beliefs or limiting biases that kind of like prevent them to actually get and land a first job as a software developer. But let's get into the shoes of an interviewer right now. And let's imagine that we have a job opening at our company and we receive 90 applications from people that, just, that have just finished a degree and we have also 10 applications for, from people that are self-taught developers. Now, imagine that on the one side you have those 90 people that have finished a college or a higher education that kind of like guarantees us as a company that they have a basic understanding of computer science. And on the other hand, we have 10 applicants that we don't know exactly what they know, what are their experience, we don't know that. So the problem is that unless you stand out among those 100 applicants, your chances to be hired as a self-taught developer diminish quite a bit. So the most common mistake that self-taught developers actually do, it's only one mistake, is that don't really put any effort into standing out for the recruiters and technical interviewers. So therefore, in this video, I will actually tell you or give you some advice with concrete actionable items that you can do to stand or to start standing out more so that you so that when you apply to the next software development job you actually get noticed and you get to the interview before getting a rejection the first mistake that self-taught developers do and that prevent them to stand out when it comes to technical interviewers and recruiters is that they don't take the portfolio seriously and i know everybody says hey you need to build a portfolio and I'm sure that you are already building one. But let me tell you once again the experiences that I had as a technical interviewer with self-taught developers. Now, there is unfortunately this common misconception that when you build your portfolio, you just need to build some nice looking UIs. So everybody is putting a lot of work and a lot of concentration in this UI part. And as it comes that as at the beginning as a self-taught developer, obviously you don't really have all the skills to make stunning web applications or stunning UIs and uh, user experiences, you often go to templates. And I have seen a lot of me templates that were simply misused. So self-taught developers just changing some pictures, some text, and they said, hey, I did this. And when they come to the interview, unfortunately, they don't even know exactly what's the difference between HTML and CSS or what's the difference between an HTML, which is a markup language and a programming language. So when you go on the web and you just take templates and use them in your portfolio without giving too much thought about, okay, what do we have in this template at all? You're doing, you, you're, you're doing yourself a total disservice. So that's really not something that's okay for you. And then there is the second part, because once again, self-taught developers tend to think that, okay, that's a portfolio, it needs to look good. Unfortunately, just by creating a good looking website or a good looking static application, that doesn't really prove exactly what your knowledge of programming is. So that's why, based on my experience, is that self-taught developers would actually do great if they start to focus more on being a full stack. And building a portfolio that actually contains a complete solution with backend and with frontend. And when it comes to backend, of course, with databases and strategies to talk to the databases, eventually also use some tools, so, or, some ORM, some very commonly used libraries in your specific language or framework. All this stuff is very important for technical recruiters and technical interviewers when they actually look at your portfolio. Just by looking at a very nice website doesn't really tell much. 
But if we see something that you have created from scratch with the entire functionality, then we understand or we already know that you probably have some very serious problem solving skills because you cannot build such a system without solving problems day in and day out. So that's why it's very important to take your portfolio seriously and build full stack end to end solution that you totally understand. So each line of code that you have in your portfolio needs to be fully understood by you. So when an interviewer asks you, what does this line of code do? You should be able to respond exactly what that line of code does. And that happens if you really write the code yourself. It, it's really no, no way that you can get the code working correctly and that you don't know exactly what it does when an interviewer asks you. The second very common mistake that I see when self-taught developers apply for job interviews is that they are either overestimating their skills or underestimating their skills. Now, when we talk about overestimation, there is also this, well, theory about the Dunning-Kruger effect. And when it comes to underestimation, that's also called something like the imposter syndrome. But when it comes to applying to jobs, the biggest problem for technical recruiters and technical interviewers is actually overestimations of your skill. And that's kind of like, well, proven that usually people that underperform tend to evaluate their skill set at the higher level that it actually is. So the thing is, as a self-taught developer, you need to be very careful at this aspect and be humble and try to not overestimate yourself. If we talk in these terms, it's better even to underestimate yourself because this will never prevent you to get a job interview if you have a correct portfolio, if you have a personal brand and so on. And in the interview, people will actually notice that you know a lot more stuff than you actually say you do. The third very common problem that uh, I see with self-taught developers is that they do not contribute to open source libraries. And as self-taught developers, you are using libraries day in and day out. So why not even contribute to them? And the biggest misconception here is that, well, developers say, hey, I'm too, too junior. I, I really have, I don't have the skills to contribute to an open source project. Let me tell you once again, this is not true. It's totally wrong. Because when it comes to open source projects, there are a lot of things around an open source project. And even if you are at a very beginning level, there might be some things that you could still do for that specific project. Like for instance, writing documentation. Writing documentation is a very important part. And if you already have used that library in your code, writing the documentation will come naturally to you. And it doesn't really involve a high skill set. But by doing this, you actually learn a lot about the specific library, the programming patterns that were used, and it's really valuable to you. Another thing that can be done in open source projects, even if you are quite a beginner, is testing, unit testing. Unit testing is very important and almost or virtually every open source library has also or is accompanied by unit tests. Now, writing unit tests is once again a very good way to learn more, to understand the systems, to understand programming patterns, and you contribute to that specific software. And believe me, when you share your GitHub profile, when you apply for a job and recruiters or interviewers say, uh, see that you are a contributor to some open source library, believe me, this is something that stands out. If you enjoyed this video so far, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you didn't do this already. Also the thumbs up button, that would be highly appreciated. It will make this video easier to discover for others who might have the exact same question as you have. And also, if you have any question, don't be shy and head over to the comment section and leave your comment, leave your question, leave your, well, opinion or anything that you would have to say, leave it there and I will be more than happy to get in touch with you. A final mistake that I see self-taught developer do is not paying enough attention to the importance of developing a personal brand as a developer. And here, the misconception is once again very common to the previous that we have discussed this. You would say, hey, I'm too beginner, I don't really, or I'm not able, or I don't have anything to create my personal brand with. And that's also wrong. What you could do, for instance, you could start a blog on Medium or maybe your own blog, and you can document in your blog your learning journey. That's once again a very good opportunity for you to better understand the concepts that you have learned just by writing them, just by trying to explain them to others. That would really help you systemize your knowledge very, very good. And when technical interviewers will ask you about certain aspects, you will surely remember them better if you have also written them. Another thing that you could do to develop your personal brand is to start to develop 
your social media presence. And when it comes to software development, a very good place where you should be is LinkedIn. Make yourself a very professional looking LinkedIn profile and post a lot of things, maybe links to your blogs, but also your thoughts about your journey, about the things that you're learning. And that would be also highly helpful for others that might be at the beginning at the journey and it would be also helpful for you because once again, you systemize your thoughts, you systemize your knowledge and this really brings your skills to the next level. Also make sure that you invest a little bit of time into well, creating a good looking GitHub profile and also contributing a lot to your projects. Make sure that your projects are all on GitHub to open source as we discussed earlier. But the most important thing is that when a recruiter clicks on your GitHub profile or a technical interviewers, they should see their all the green dots there with your contributions. That's really important. They might not even look at exactly what you have contributed. But if they see that you have a lot of contributions and that you have pushed a lot of commits and actions on GitHub, that's also something that really stands out. Once again, if you have enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and like this video so that you'd make it easier to discover for others that might have the same questions or troubles that you have. And please subscribe to this channel if you didn't do this already and make sure to also hit the notification bell button so that you are always notified when there is some new content on this channel. Last but not least, if you have any question or you just want to get in touch with me, don't be shy and head over to the comment section and leave a comment and I would be more than happy to get in touch with you. This being said, thank you very much for watching and no matter what, keep coding.